Next area we'll cover is the source monitor up here and a couple of these tabs up here. What this window basically does is a, is a quick editor for placing things in the timeline and also for controlling effects as well, which we will get into much later on a different segment. We'll just kind of give you the basics of this. Um, whenever you load a clip here, I've got some clips I'm going to open up double click on a clip that I've got synced here with video and audio and it will load that clip when you double click on it it will load that clip into uh, this window here the source monitor and this is just like a like I said a basic editor some things that you've got up here that you need to uh, know about will be first of all here this is your uh, time code for this window you do have different modes up here as well. I'm just going to quickly go over this. Uh, this you really won't do as much as you will in color correction, but if you come up and you have some sort of weird view with the scopes and things like that, you can just click this drop down window and go back to composite video. That is the default where you want to be as composite video. <clears throat> but uh, this can kind of largely be ignored for right now. When you get into color correction, you're going to be changing views into different uh, uh, scopes and other things and composite modes and whatnot. But uh, the composite video is where you want to be. But this right here is the time code that belongs to the clip. <clears throat> and this represents the exact frame that you're on. You've got uh, what this represents here. You've got hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Right now on our time code, we're at 12 hours, 51 minutes, 50 seconds, and 7 frames. And you'll notice if you're shooting uh, 24 frames per second, I'm going to progress frame by frame here. This is your playhead that shows what exact time code that you're on and will show the frame up here for that time code. Now, if we, since this was shot at 24 frames per second, watch what happens. I'm going to advance frame by frame by using my left and right arrow keys. I'm going right arrow key one at a time. It'll advance a frame. There's a frame advance. There's another one. There's another one. You just keep clicking that. And it'll go frame by frame and advance frame by frame. Watch what happens when we get up to 23. Since this is shot at 24 frames per second, actually drop frame. Uh, when I skip to the next one, it will go to zero and will update your seconds here. And same on the seconds, this will get up to 59 and it will update to zeros and update this to 52 on the, on the minutes and so on. Um, what these are usually used for here, this number here is usually um, good camera operators will put this into, oops, good camera operators will uh, use this hour meter as a real number or a tape number basically so if it's the first um, if it's the first card that they put in the camera to shoot on they will change their hour to zero one that is your first card and this also represents real number this is an arbitrary just kind of random number that was on the camera at the time uh, since it was just all one scene that was being shot so that's an explanation of time code this is your playhead right here you can grab this you can drag it through your clip and find uh, different portions of your clip here. You can skim it to the end. You can go to the beginning. So let me load another clip here. Um, as we skim through this thing here, um, you'll see the time code change, and this time code is unique for this clip. A um, couple other things here. So this is your playhead. Uh, you get this zoom right here. You grab this. You can zoom in by pulling that down or zoom out to show your entire duration of the clip. Here's the beginning of the clip, here's the end of the clip. Unless you've zoomed in, then you can move around to find that playhead right there. This is just usually zoomed all the way out. And I recommend just keeping it zoomed all the way out, at least for this window here. Uh, there's some other reasons you want to have this zoomed in or zoomed out we'll get into later. Um, right here, if you happen to be zoomed up on your image or zoomed out on your image, this little window here will zoom in or out on your image. And what you've got out here is this kind of uh, this darker color here. This represents not part of the image. That is really not part of the image. This comes in help when you're doing some compositing to see if there's things outside of your frame um, that you're going to be animating into the frame later on. But right now, that's not really important. But you can zoom in on your image. By going to 200%, 400%, this is going to be zoomed in on your image here. Um, and then you've got these little scroll bars here to scroll across and find your image that you're looking at here. Uh, typically, this is just, you're just going to pull this down and have it on fit. So you can see your entire window. If you get into some compositing, that's where this zoom will help a little bit. Moving across here, actually, let's go over the controllers. Uh, we're going to get into markers later. 
uh, but this is adding markers on a specific frame. You add a marker, you can add notes to that exact frame. Same on your timeline, same on clips. You can add these markers to add notes or, or edit points as well. Um, we're going to use in and out points instead of markers uh, to start with, but, but that is also another feature of markers there. Um, and I'll undo that. This is for adding in and out points. We'll get into that because your shortcuts for in and out points are going to be, if you hover over these, will be I and O. If you hit I, it will add that little dark line right there that you've got. Uh, that is an endpoint on that exact frame. Now, if you move down on the timeline a little bit and you hit O, it'll add an out point. So this basically, this just trimmed this clip from this point to that point there. If you want to skip to those um, in and out points, you can use these right here. The, the uh, shortcuts for those are Shift I and Shift O will land you on your in point or your out point. Now this here is a uh, frame by frame meter here. This will step back or step forward frame by frame. Uh, and this is just a play. So if you play or stop. Uh, these are all done through, uh, via shortcuts though. Uh, you're just going to use your space bar for play and pause. And you're going to use your arrow keys left and right to skip through frame by frame. Now if you hold down a little other shortcut here, shift usually gives you some alternate uh, shortcuts here. If you hold down shift and do arrow right, it'll skip through. You'll notice here on my time code meter, five frames at a time. So that will skip you five frames at a time by holding shift and arrow right or left. Uh, left to go backwards five frames at a time, right to go um, five frames forward at a time. And if you just let go of shift and do the arrow, one frame at a time. You can see the time code meter there going one frame at a time. And play is your space bar and play is pause. Um, okay, <clears throat> these are a couple other little shortcuts here we're, we're going to get into now. This is uh, insert and overwrite. We're going to really demonstrate this as we get into the editing demonstration. I've put an in point and out point here. Now if you hit comma or period or hit insert or overwrite, it'll add these this in point and out point to the timeline. So now if I hit comma, which is the shortcut for insert, you'll notice it drops it down into my timeline where my playhead is. Uh, we're going to get into play into the timeline here in a minute. Um, if I hit period, you'll notice it adds it to the timeline as well. We're going to get into the difference. One basically overwrites footage, one shoves footage over and inserts it. So your insert will shove footage over and insert it. Overwrite will eat into footage and uh, will eat into footage in its way. Um, okay, we've got this right here, this little icon, which is export frame. This is if you want to stay, save a JPEG or DPX or still image of this frame right here, you click on the picture, it'll bring this up and you can choose your format to save a still image as, DPX for high quality, JPEG for compressed. Um, you can name it, browse, and hit OK and it will save it to that location and you can also click import into project and it will import that file that still image after it's exported it back into the project and you can use it in your media in here. We'll get into that later as well as we show you guys how to edit still images. But that's basically what these items do here. A um, couple other things here. Now if you're going to be dragging your uh, clips down into your timeline uh, you're going to be grabbing this video here if you drag just the image itself, grab the image like this, click on it and drag, it will drag. It's the same thing as like an insert or, or, an, or an overwrite. It drags it down into the timeline. You can place it wherever you want in your timeline. That's just by grabbing the, this image right here. And that will bring both video and audio down into the timeline. I'm going to delete that. If you grab just this right here, this will grab and drag video only. That will bring just the video down from that clip and drop it into your timeline. If you grab this little icon here, that will just bring your audio from that clip down into the timeline. So that's your audio, your video. Okay, um, one thing I wanted to cover with uh, navigation here is moving your playhead here. Um, we showed you your arrow keys. We showed you your shift arrow keys, which goes frame by frame or five frames at a time. Now if you hit your home key or your end key, it'll go to the beginning of the clip or to the end of the clip. So home goes to the beginning and goes to the end. If you hold shift 
and do I is your shortcut for jumping to the endpoint. Shift O jumps to the out point. Those shortcuts are down here just by hovering over these um, icons here and it will show you the shortcuts for those items. Um, another thing that, um, now this is kind of something I say that um, people who are good editors or, or become professional editors are familiar with are using their JKL keys. Okay, before I do that, um, I'm going to clear my in and out points here. Uh, the way you can do that, just to get rid of these, is you can right click and go clear in and out. Notice it will clear the in and out and make them uh, vanish. Um, by the way, if you wanted to change your in and out points, all you have to do is either go to the edge and grab these here and move them. We'll show more of this in editing. You can grab your in and out points there, or you can uh, simply get it to the frame where you want to change it to and hit I, or get it to the, your new out point and hit O, and it will update those in and out points. Shortcut to clear those is Option X. Um, or Alt X. All right, once those are gone there, um, I'm going to show you JKL here. Um, J is rewind. Now you'll notice that JKL is conveniently located next to your, uh, you can put your, if you're using your left hand, you can put your left hand on JKL on your keyboard uh, with your ring finger on J, J, your middle finger on K, and your index finger on L. <clears throat> and then you can work this like a video game and you can, uh, J is rewind, K is stop, L is forward. This is very standard for almost all editors, uh, all cutters, at least professional cutters. If you hit J, Notice it rewinds at 100%. You hit K, it stops. You hit L, it forwards at 100%. It plays at regular speed forward. K stops. Now if I get to this begin at the beginning and I'm looking for a certain point of a clip here, I'm going to hit L once, it's going 100%. If you hit it again, it goes 150%. You hit it again, it goes 200%. Hit it again, 250, 300, 350, until it maxes out and it's going, optim it's going uh, the max speed. <clears throat> J the same, J 100%, 150, 200, hitting again, 250, 300, and so on until it maxes out and it's going as fast as it can. If you just hit it a whole bunch of times, I'm going to hit home, go to the beginning, hit L a whole bunch of times, and it's going full speed there. If you're looking for a certain part there, you can just hit K, stop, there it is, J to rewind, get it exactly where you want it, and you can put an endpoint. So get used to JKL. JKL is kind of what professional editors use. You get used to it. Moves, uh, you get moving through the timeline really quick. Or you can just grab your playhead and skim through it as well, like this, with your mouse. Uh, but JKL is really a good way to go. And is a quick way of navigating through clips and timeline, uh, the timeline as well. Um, okay, next over here, we've got... Um, <clears throat> This uh, select playback resolution. This is basically if you're if you're using red files or if you're using anything higher than 10, 1920 by 1080, oftentimes you will turn have to turn this down to uh, half resolution because your computer won't have the speed to play back that full resolution. Depending on if you have hardware built for playing back 4K footage or not, if you have like a Black Magic card or something else, uh, or some beefy video card to play back your footage. Um, if you just got a regular computer, you're probably going to have to turn this down to half resolution to get it to play full frames, all of your frames. Otherwise, it will skip and it will jump and it will not play back all that well. Um, this is offline 1920 by 1080 HD footage that was encoded from RED. So I'm editing offline with this footage that will be eventually reconnected back to the RED footage for color correction. Um, so this has pretty optimized speed with this system here. If I play, there's a scream. Uh, but if I play through this, you'll notice that this just plays. This will, well, I'm not sure how the recording looks, but this will play at regular speed, regular motion, no problems lagging or, or slowing down. Um, it will, if I have it on full, it will not have any issues. And it will not, eventually, if you keep taking the resolution down, you're going to know a resolution. You'll notice a resolution loss. But when you're editing in red, you can do half because you're editing on a smaller screen. Half the resolution, 2K, is going to look just fine on a, on a laptop screen or a regular uh, HD screen that you're working on while you're editing. Besides that, it's not taking the quality down in the end. It's going to re reference the original media. And when you export it out and encode it, it'll look 
amazing if it looked amazing in the first place. So this you can usually have it on full if it's 1920 by 1080 or 2K footage. If you're going up to 4K, oftentimes you'll have to take it down to, to depending on the computer speed, half at least or quarter resolution, depending on uh, what codec you're using or what uh, sampling size you're using with red footage. Um, anyway, so most of the time on 2K footage you can have this on full. Uh, otherwise, on red footage, quarter or half. Uh, okay, settings for this window right here. Uh, these are kind of the same settings that we showed up here with the drop down. We'll show some more of these settings as we move along. Um, uh, as we get into different editing features, you'll, we'll have different reasons for using this. Right now, you can just leave it on composite video. Um, and then right here, this just basically shows the duration of your in and out point. If you do an in point, you'll notice this change because now my new duration of my new clip in and out point is 10 seconds, 22 frames. Um, and this is a little feature for uh, adding buttons down here. Uh, I just usually use shortcuts, so I'm very rarely using any of these buttons down here because I'm using all shortcuts. Uh, but you can add buttons down here to add, so you can click on those with your mouse. But like I said, I don't use them because I'm going to be teaching you all the shortcuts, which is much easier to use with the keyboard and just memorizing those things. So that's really all the basics you need to know for uh, the source monitor. Uh, we'll get into the effects controls later on as we get into effects and the audio mixer and, and metadata as well. So uh, with that, we'll be moving on in the next episode to uh, the timeline.